clauses. Here is an overview of the vocabulary in this lesson. Predicate, subject, object, clause, compound predicate, compound subject, independent clause, dependent clause. Predicates. Predicates are verbs or actions in a sentence. The words predicate and verb are pretty much interchangeable, but predicate refers to the structure of a sentence, and clauses are all about sentence structure. Here are some examples of predicates. Ugh, found a new club by the tar pit. The verb found is functioning as the predicate in this sentence. Og was excited about his new club. And the verb of being, was, is functioning as the predicate in this sentence. Subjects. Subjects are nouns or pronouns that take the predicate. Here are some examples of subjects. You won't believe it, Shalia. We stayed inside and texted one another all night. To find the subject, we first should find the predicate, then we ask ourselves who or what is taking this predicate. In the first sentence, the predicate is the verb phrase, won't believe. So we ask ourselves, who or what won't believe? And in this case, it's the pronoun you, which makes you the subject of this sentence. In the second sentence, we have two predicates, stayed and texted. So we ask ourselves, who stayed and texted? And in this sentence, the pronoun we stayed and texted, which makes we the subject of this sentence. Objects. Objects are nouns and pronouns that do not take predicates. So any noun or personal pronoun in the sentence that is not taking an action is an object. Here are some examples. Jones passes the ball to Bradley. In this sentence, the predicate is passes. So we ask ourselves, who or what passes? The answer to that question is Jones. Jones is the subject of this sentence since he takes the predicate passes. But we have two other nouns, ball and Bradley. And these nouns do nothing in this sentence. They do not take actions. Therefore, they are objects. But students have often objected to me in saying, but Mr. Morton, the ball did do something in this sentence. The ball was passed. And to that I reply, no it wasn't. Not in this sentence. The ball was passed in the sentence, the ball was passed. But in the sentence, Jones passes the ball, the ball does nothing. The ball does not take an action. And that's not to say that the ball or Bradley could never be a subject. They just aren't in this sentence. Let's take a look at another sentence. Bradley is dribbling the ball the wrong way. The predicate in this sentence is the verb phrase is dribbling. We ask ourselves who or what is dribbling? And the answer to that question is Bradley. So in this sentence, Bradley is the subject. But we still have two nouns, ball and way. And neither of these nouns are taking actions, which makes them objects. Clause. A clause is a subject or group of subjects working with a predicate or group of predicates. Here's an example of a clause. Brad is so dreamy. The verb is is functioning as the predicate in this sentence. So we ask ourselves who or what is. The answer to that question is Bradley, which makes Bradley the subject of this sentence. In this sentence, we have Bradley, the subject, working with the predicate is, which means this sentence has one clause. That makes clauses seem an awful lot like sentences, but clauses are different from sentences. And the reason why is that every sentence has to have at least one clause, but some sentences are made up of more than one clause. Clauses are the building blocks of complex sentences. Here's an example of a sentence with two clauses. I just love how he walks to class. There are two predicates in this sentence, love and walks, but each takes a different subject. The subject in the first clause is I. I love. But the subject in the second clause is he. He walks. So while this is just one sentence, it is a sentence with two clauses. One subject and one predicate working together, followed by another subject and a predicate working together. Compound predicate. A compound predicate is when the same subject or group of subjects takes two or more predicates. Here's an example of a sentence using compound predicates. You will remember your lines and bring this scene to life or I will hunt you down and kill you. Surely he's just using figurative language. He's not going to kill anybody. But let's look at the structure of this sentence. There are four predicates in this sentence. The verb phrase will remember, the verb bring, the verb phrase will hunt, and another verb kill. All of these are predicates in this sentence. Let's look at each group to find the subjects. So we ask ourselves, who will remember? Who will bring? The answer to that question is the pronoun you. You is the subject in the first clause. The subject you has a compound predicate. Two predicates, will remember and bring. But what about will hunt and kill? Well, we ask ourselves, who will hunt and kill? The answer to that question is the pronoun I. The pronoun I is the subject in the second clause. The subject in the second clause, I, has a compound predicate. That is to say, when two or more predicates take the same subject. 
So this sentence has two clauses and two compound predicates. Compound subject. A compound subject is when two or more nouns take the same predicate or group of predicates. Here's an example of a sentence with a compound subject. Johnny, Jimmy, Timmy, Tommy, and Bobby walk to the ticket window at the movie theater. The predicate in this sentence is walked. So we ask ourselves, who walked? The answer to that question is rather long. Johnny, Jimmy, Timmy, Tommy, and Bobby, which means we have five subjects. Five subjects taking the same predicate, which means we have a compound subject. Here's another example of a sentence with a compound subject. The ticket clerk and her manager would not sell them tickets to an R-rated movie. In this sentence, the verb phrase would sell is the predicate. So we ask ourselves, who would sell? And the answer to that question is the ticket clerk and the manager which means the ticket clerk and the manager are the subjects of this clause. They both take the predicate would sell, which means this clause has a compound subject. Independent clause. An independent clause is when a subject and a predicate work together and express a complete thought. An independent clause could stand alone as a sentence by itself. Here's an example of an independent clause. Dr. Brain developed a powerful mind control serum. Independent clauses could be complete sentences, just like this example here. We have the predicate developed and the subject Dr. Brain. By itself, this sentence can stand alone. Here's another example of an independent clause. He's going to poison Cityville's water supply with it. Here we have the predicate poisoned and the subject Dr. Brain. Again, this clause can stand by itself. It has a subject and a predicate and expresses a complete thought, which means it is an independent clause. Compare that to dependent clauses. Dependent clauses are a subject and a predicate working together but not expressing a complete thought. And here are some examples of dependent clauses. Although Dr. Brain developed a powerful mind control serum. Now this sentence is strikingly similar to the one that you just heard, but it's different because it doesn't express a complete thought. Why doesn't it express a complete thought? Well, it'd be because of the word although. The word although is turning this clause into a dependent clause. This sentence does not express a complete thought and would need to be attached to an independent clause in order to form a complete sentence. Here's another example of a dependent clause. After Dr. Brain poisoned Cityville's water supply with it. Once again, this clause does not express a complete thought. Although this sentence is almost the same as the one on the previous slide, it has the conjunction after attached to it, which makes this sentence not express a complete thought. It is a dependent clause. So the words in blue are conjunctions, and conjunctions are words that make clauses dependent. When we add a subordinating conjunction to a clause, it becomes a dependent clause, which means it cannot stand by itself. Dependent clauses need an independent clause to express a complete thought. Otherwise, we have sentence fragments. Here is an example. Although Dr. Brain developed a powerful mind control serum, Super Dad does not have enough mind to control. So we have two clauses. The first clause is a dependent clause because of the subordinating conjunction although. That turns the first clause into a dependent clause. It needs the second clause, super dad does not have enough mind to control, in order to express a complete thought. The second clause is an independent clause. It has a subject and a predicate and it is expressing a complete thought. We could turn it into a dependent clause by adding a subordinating conjunction to it, such as although. Although super dad does not have enough mind to control, would be another example of a dependent clause. So the only thing that really separates a dependent clause from an independent clause is the presence of a conjunction. Sentences can have many clauses, not just one or two. New clauses begin at the conjunctions, which link clauses, or when new subjects are introduced. Here's an example of a sentence with many clauses. I want to eat your brains, but I can't run very fast because I hurt my foot when I was chasing someone else. So please slow down a little bit. Ah. This sentence may seem like a run-on sentence, but it is in fact grammatically correct. It may be a little long, it would probably benefit from some adeline, but nonetheless it is structurally sound. Let's break it down part by part. In the first clause we have the predicate want. We ask ourselves who want, and it's the pronoun I. So the subject is I, the predicate is want. Then we have a conjunction but, which introduces a new clause. The predicate in the next clause is can run. So we ask ourselves, who can run? And once again, it's the pronoun I. So we have another subject and a predicate working together in the second clause. Then we have the conjunction because, attaching yet another clause. The predicate in the third clause is hurt. 
So we ask ourselves, who hurt? And it's the pronoun I. The pronoun I is the subject in the third clause, I hurt my foot, which is attached to yet another clause with the conjunction when. The conjunction when joins the next clause with the predicate was chasing and the subject I, which leads to the next conjunction, so, which joins one more clause with the predicate slow and the implied subject you. And lastly, we have an interjection at the end of it. So while this sentence is extremely long and could require some editing, we have one independent clause, I want to eat your brains, connected to four other dependent clauses with conjunctions. Here are some more examples of clauses. Pandas defend themselves with their sharp claws and powerful jaws. What is the subject and predicate in this clause? The predicate is defend. So we ask ourselves, who or what defends? And the answer to that question is panda. The panda defends. The panda is the subject that takes the predicate defend in this sentence. Here are some more examples of clauses. Had he fishes all day, even though he never catches anything. Which clause in this sentence is dependent? First, let's find the predicates. The first predicate in this sentence is fishes. So we ask ourselves, who fishes? Harry fishes. Harry fishes is part of the first clause, Harry fishes all day. But there's another predicate in this sentence, catches. So we ask ourselves, who or what catches? And the answer to that question is the pronoun he. He catches. So he is the subject of the second clause. The second clause is, even though he never catches anything. So which clause expresses a complete thought? Harry fishes all day, or even though he never catches anything? The clause which is dependent is the second clause, even though he never catches anything. And that's because of the subordinating conjunction, even though, which makes the second clause dependent on the first because it doesn't express a complete thought. And here's a final example of clauses. Arg, we shall land our boat ashore, find tailors and seamstresses, and repair our tattered garments, mateys. How many predicates does this sentence have? And how many clauses does it have? Well, let's count the predicates. We have the predicate land, find, and repair. So we have three predicates. And we ask ourselves, who or what will land, find, and repair? And there's only one pronoun which takes all of those predicates, the pronoun we. We land, find, and repair. So even though this sentence has three predicates, it only has one clause. In review, predicates are verbs. Subjects are nouns or pronouns that take the predicate. Objects are nouns or personal pronouns that do not take predicates. A clause is a subject and a predicate working together, or a group of subjects and predicates working together. Dependent clauses have conjunctions. Conjunctions make dependent clauses depend on independent clauses in order to express complete thoughts.